All right, I'm on hole number three of the Extreme Hills Tournament. I'm Wednesday's qualifying round in the rookie division. And what is Extreme Hills hole number three? It's Grimberg Slopes hole number two. And I am playing this. Now, there are several ways that you can play it, and I have some teammates that are playing. There's, 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 there's option one, option two. Option one has layup. And you can do this layup in several ways. You can come here with an extra mile and a bigger ball on this side, or you can use a big topper on this side. You're going to end up out here in your wood range, and it's a long shot with your wood. In most cases, you can use a sniper. The other way you can do option number one is that you can try and blast it over so that you run through this and get down into this area, and you're down in your long iron range. That's another way that you can go at it. And the thing about this particular shot is that from where you're at, where you're at here, to the green is pretty flat so not a lot of elevation change in this it's a pretty flat shot the thing I, the the thing i find about this shot is when you're coming through here you're here's the end of the rough and here's where the rock is you got a very small little lane to get through to get down in there and so if you if you end up in the sand of the rough here you can recover if you've got good recovery clubs i, I think you could probably recover even if you had bad recovery clubs but um, you can, it's possible to recover from down here Option number two, you can come over here with a bigger ball and no overpower and just hit it straight forward. And you're probably going to end up out here in your long iron range. But this side over here, here's the green down here. And, and here's the other side. It goes up on the hill and it goes down. So if you hit here and you're over here, it's going to be a different elevation than if you hit way up here at the top. And so depending on where you hit out here, you're going to have a different elevation. So it's going to be real important that if you hit to this side over here, that you try and get to a consistent spot. So you're in this spot and you're in this spot and you're in this spot and you're in this spot. So every time you take this shot coming into the cup, you can work that elevation number and you know you're in the same spot here. So if you're here once and then you're up here once and then you're over here once, the elevation is going to be different and you're not, it's going to be super hard to work your shot out. I'm trying to get myself way down here. You can see these moguls. See those moguls that are down there? I'm trying to get up in this range in front of those moguls so that I'm in about mid short iron. That's my goal. So that in order to get that done, I have to use a power five ball and I've got to do max overpower. So what can go wrong? <laughs> what can go wrong with that? Like, can we list all of the ways that it, that can go wrong? I'm just enticed by the opportunity to get into minimum or mid short iron. You know, anytime you can get into mid short iron, that's a that's a damn good thing. And he's a present ball. I don't need a lot of curl here. The key here is it's all about the drive. If you catch your drive and you get a perfect, you can probably get, you might be able to get away with a one ring great to the left or the right. But ideally, you want to hit a perfect. But if I start, if I hit a two ring great to the left or the right, I'm in big trouble. Big, big, big trouble. I go first. Right dead center in the middle, 3.1. It's a ring and a half. I'm going to put the forward moving wind back in. Oh, and I hit a 700 ring straight to the left. And it'll hit the rough right off the bat in the sand. That messenger down there was, I don't know what the deal was. I was getting some serious lag right there. I think I can recover from there. When those rose balls came out, I wish I'd have bought a bigger pack of those rose balls. I don't buy, sometimes I'll buy, like, if you spend money on the game and you're buying, you get some of these 
if there's a really good five power ball that comes out, it's really like, instead of buying, like, you know, you buy a $5 pack, I wish they had $10 packs, but you know, like sometimes the $20 pack just isn't enough, but like the $35 pack, buying a bigger pack when those power five balls come out and those rose balls had real good wind, like as far as needle speed, uh, Max Club right there. I'm going to do a 30% wind adjustment. So it's 2.5 times 1.3. It's 3.2 divided by 2. It's about 1.6 rings. Point six rings. And hit perfect. Oh, that was way off perfect. I think I was running out of time, so I released a little early. Well, the worst scenario there is that I have this putt rolled back towards the hole. There you go. Good job. If you watch my stuff on a regular basis, I'm not a very good putter. <laughs> I'm not used to having to take long putts. I usually put myself in a position where I don't have to take long putts, so long putts are not my forte. I've said this before and I'll say it again, there's two ways that you can look at putting. You can either get really good at taking long putts or you can get really good at hitting it close to the hole so you don't have to take long putts. And I'm a big fan of getting close to the hole so you don't have to take long putts. So sometimes I find myself in a spot of bother and it's like, man, I wish I was a better putter, but in most cases, I'm a better driver to the hole so I don't have to take long putts. Eagle. It's good to know. I will tell you though that sometimes epic failing like that and ending up in the rough or the sand is not a bad thing. Because the deal is, is that in the in the turn of, in the weekend round, when we get into the weekend round, if I take that shot and I end up out there, I'm gonna know. I'm gonna know before. I'm not gonna have to sit here and wait for my opponent to go and then stress about it the whole time. Like, hey man, can I make it from there? Or what kind of weird weird shot am I gonna have to do in order to get up there? I'm just gonna know. Hey, I can recover from there. It's not a big deal. Just get up there, get your eagle, and move on. Give yourself a shot. You got enough area down there that you don't have to do some hero shot that you can set yourself up and try and you know if I'd hit that perfect. I have a lot of confidence that that would have been super close to the hole. And there are times during, especially when there's new holes out, and I really like it when we can go out and do friendlies, all intentionally hit into the rough in some areas. Like that's an area right there if we were taking the shot that we would, we, we could end up in the rough, and I'll intentionally hit out into the rough in that area just to see if I can recover so that I know, hey, if you hit in the rough right there, you can recover. But if you hit into that spot in the rough, you're screwed. All right, that was hole number three, Stream Hills. Wednesday's qualifying round in the rookie division. Thanks for watching.